wormholes, particle physics, extra dimensions. Are the wonders of so-called reality really what they appear to be? Or do we exist in an elaborate hologram? Is our universe the result of random activity or the result of intelligent design? If a creator was involved, can we discover him through our perception of divine order? This is Into the Multiverse with Josh Peck. Welcome to a very special episode of Into the Multiverse. Actually, it's probably going to be a few episodes on this topic, but uh, it, it's really weird and exciting stuff with me in studio, my lovely, beautiful wife, Christina Peck. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing great. So as I said, we're going to talk about some weird stuff, so we'll be telling uh, everybody all about you. <laughs> <laughs> I am quite weird. <laughs> uh, no, actually, we're going to be talking about something called extra-dimensional Earth. Uh, th this is a topic that we've been wanting to cover on this show for a while, but it it's sort of like the quantum field uh, theory episode. We're trying to figure out, like, how, how do we make this even remotely relatable to any <laughs> anybody? Because there's some weird stuff. Um, but... I, I think on the surface, it's not too complicated. I think people will find it interesting. And, uh, and it actually has to do with a, a lot with uh, creation in the Bible, mm -hmm. even prophecy, mm -hmm. uh, where we're going after this life. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's, it's, it's really interesting stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I know this, this is something that you're interested in, too. I, I do. I like cosmology a lot. Uh, it's uh, one of my favorite topics. Uh, somebody at the conference last weekend mm -hmm. uh, w was talking about physics and how they, they're they really interested in that field. And yeah, the Blessed Hope uh, yes. Conference in Norman, Oklahoma. Yes. Yeah, by our good friends, Prophecy Watchers. Yes, <laughs> yes, they're wonderful. They did a great job, by the way. Shout out to those guys. Mm -hmm. Bob and Gary are awesome. Yeah. Uh, so they were, I had some people come over and they were talking to me about physics and I let them know. I said, you know, my expertise on physics, I love all of it. Mm -hmm. It's a very wide and it's a very, uh, there's so much in physics. Yeah. But my favorite was astronomy, yeah. cosmology, um, astrophysics is where, and, and rocket science yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is where my specialty lies mm -hmm. in the engineering part of everything. Uh, and I said that, you know, I, particle physics is very interesting to me, mm -hmm. but that's more your yeah. your side, <laughs> the particles and the waves, which is awesome. But I like the extra dimensional stuff. Yeah, it and all ties together. But the, and th that's what that's what's cool about this topic because uh, it br it does bring all those things together. It's 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 quantum physics and cosmology, mm -hmm. uh, creation in in the largest and smallest forms. Um, but th this. We got we got interested in this when we we found an article a while ago. This was this was maybe a year ago, um, about the Earth having extra gravity. The mm -hmm. Earth has more gravity than it should, mm -hmm. which is weird. <laughs> and you know, most people would think, well, you know, so what? They just miscalculated, or they didn't calculate it right. Well, the, the, these calculations are actually pretty accurate. Like they they've got a good sense of of how much the earth should weigh mm -hmm. down to a really small margin of error and how much it actually does weigh. And mm -hmm. it's, it's inconsistent. Mm -hmm. They are able to measure this based on uh, the, the, the gravitational pull of, of the earth on satellites. Mm -hmm. So uh, they notice that satellites are, are getting pulled more than they're supposed to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and, and that's why those calculations are so accurate because they have to be able to keep satellites up there without crashing to the earth or flying off into space somewhere. You know, they got to keep it in orbit. Uh, but the earth is supposed to be, uh, which th this is just way too big of a number to even comprehend, but <laughs> it, it's supposed to be 1.317 by 10 to the 25, uh, 25th uh, pounds. But the earth is actually a little heavier than that. It's a fraction of about one uh, one twenty thousandth. <laughs> so there's an extra like one twenty thousandth of the earth, which doesn't sound like much, but, um, but on a larger scale, on that big of a scale, it, it's point, it, it's anywhere from point zero zero five to point zero zero eight percent, which again, is not a lot, 
Right. When, when, but when, when you have something that, that, that's that big, that small mm -hmm. percentage is actually a lot larger. So for example, um, if the, di okay, the diameter of the Earth is 7,917 uh, miles, if we were to take the same percentage amount, uh, uh, 0 0.005 of that, we would, we would be left with uh, 0.395875 miles, or about 2,090 feet. Okay. So that means if you, were, if you were to take that percentage of the diameter of the Earth and turn it up on end, it would reach 2,090 feet up in the air. Yeah. So in, in, those, in those terms, that, that's, we can kind of see that's a lot. Yeah, uh, that's another half a mile. Yeah, it's, it's, it's huge. Um, mm -hmm. And actually, 0.005% and, and so we're even talking on the conservative side because they could say that they say that it could be as much as 0.008. Mm -hmm. um, okay, like if we were just talking about the surface area of the Earth, uh, that actually equates to 197 million square miles, which mm. which is uh, about the about the size of Vermont. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Now, if we consider the entire Earth, not just square miles, but uh, cubic miles, then uh, the entire Earth is 260 trillion cubic miles. So that would mean that there are 13 million cubic miles of unknown mass somewhere, wow. you know, that's actually causing this gravitational pull, like th mm -hmm. this extra mass that can't be measured. They don't know what it is. They don't know where it is. So um, there are a lot of theories. The leading theory right now, the guy that actually discovered this, believes that there's a ring of dark matter around the Earth. Like that Earth has a ring, mm -hmm. and uh, but it's made of dark matter, and that's why we can't see it. Hmm. And we've talked about dark matter on this mm -hmm. show before, mm -hmm. and we've we've talked about our idea of what it could be. Yes, we've talked about that, and it could be extra dimensional, mm -hmm. uh, something extra dimensional. Uh, yeah, there there are parts of our bodies that we can't even see. You mm -hmm. know, like the soul. Yeah. Uh, so why not the earth and the cool thing about that is if it is something in an extra dimension it still would affect gravity mm -hmm. you know we we would still expect it to affect gravity in some way and, and this this is what kind of led us down this path because we were wondering okay the bible talks about a lot of stuff on earth that we can't see mm -hmm. um if it truly is extra dimensional mm -hmm. like like we believe that there's a good chance it could be um, if extra dimensional and spiritual are essentially the same thing, then all the all the spiritual stuff that is on Earth and much of it isn't. You know, I mean, there, there's not all of it is, but uh, but it does talk about certain things, and we're going to be talking about that uh, throughout this episode and probably for a couple episodes. But uh, if there really are parts of the Earth that we can't see, and if it is extra dimensional. Mm -hmm we should expect it to affect gravity. Me meaning, and the way that that would look is the Earth should have more weight than what can be measured. And we, we were thinking about that before we even found this article. It was mm -hmm. actually that idea that led us down that path of research. And mm -hmm. we thought, well, let's, let's test that theory. You know, let, let's see if there's any, if any scientist anywhere has mentioned that, you know, this is weird. The Earth is heavier than it should be. You know, there's, there's more, more of a gravitational pull. There's more mass than, uh, than there should be. And lo and behold, there, there are studies on yes. that. <laughs> and think about it this way. Um, kind of going through extra dimensional things and mm -hmm. uh, uh, on the earth think about the strange phenomena that has happened mm -hmm. wormholes opening yeah. going through the, remember the pilot that i interviewed last year bruce gernon yeah. yes yeah uh he 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 went through a wormhole mm -hmm. there are certain things that uh they have they have observed different, it looks like strings mm -hmm. or uh, some sort of creature go it, it going in and out of existence mm -hmm. in the air in certain areas. And it's more than just bugs on a camera. Yeah, you know, those just, rod yeah, things. Yeah, the rods. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I always thought that was really weird. Yes. And so they would just kind of pop in and out of existence. Yeah. So there's something definitely uh, extra dimensional going on. Yeah, and uh, and actually, and the Bible even talks about it, and it's not even it, it's not limited to just angels and things. Because mm -hmm. I, I'm not saying, you know, we're not we're not saying that heaven itself is on earth. If if it were, I think there's a lot more to heaven than there is to earth. Like mm -hmm. I, it, it it would it would create so much gravity. Like it would just be too much. I think. So I think I think heaven is not you know on earth in another dimension. But I think parts 
parts of spiritual existence are. And mm -hmm. I, I, I actually, uh, pillars in the foundation of the mm -hmm. earth. Um, yes. This is really interesting. So, so somewhere in extra dimensional space, oh, and I probably should say too, um, th a lot of this comes from an uh, appendix that I wrote in me and Derek's new, Derek Gilbert, uh, our new book, coming out the day the earth stands still. It was going to be a chapter, but I, I decided, you know, th this is this is interesting and this might explain some of the other things that we talk about mm -hmm. in the book. Uh, but to make it its own chapter, I, I think it's a little disjoint. We, we, I, I just ended up making an, an, an appendix. Mm -hmm. So th this some of this is uh, is in there. But there seems to be some type of support system or, or something for, for, uh, for the earth. The Bible mentions pillars and foundations of the mm -hmm. earth. Um, Job 9.6 says, uh, which shaketh the earth out of her place and the pillars thereof tr uh, tremble. And it also seems that these pillars connect earth and heaven in some way. Uh, Job 26.11 says, the pillars of heaven tremble and are astonished at his reproof. So these, uh, these pillars are referred to as of heaven, mm -hmm. uh, meaning they, they seem to exist as like a uh, spiritual or an extra dimensional uh, type of construct. And if we take that uh, along with Job 9.6, then uh, it, it seems like it's something that originates in heaven. It's not, an, it's not what, what I mean, it's, it's not just an earthly construct. Like you couldn't dig into the ground in the earth and find these things. Right. You know, you wouldn't see them. Mm -hmm. uh, they, would, they would essentially be invisible. Really, they're in, they're in another dimension. Um, but we also get other places where these pillars are referred to uh, as being of earth instead of of heaven, like 1 Samuel 2, 8. So it seems like that they, it's, it's of heaven and of earth. It seems like it connects the two somehow. Um, so if these pillars are extra dimensional, that, that could explain that. Um, we even see how God can use spiritual uh, pillars to complete his goals. Like in mm -hmm. Exodus 13, 21, it says, the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them, uh, to lead them the way and by night in a pillar of fire, pillar of fire. to, right. yeah, to give them light to go day and night. So we kind of have another clue of this extra dimensionality uh, in Exodus 14, 24, because that says, uh, it came to pass that in the morning, watch, in the morning watch, the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and mm -hmm. of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians. So the, the text tells us that the Lord, you know, singular, mm -hmm. looked at the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and cloud, both of them, plural, mm -hmm. you know. So was God in the pillar of fire or was he in the pillar of cloud? And as Dr. Michael Heiser would say, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's, it's really cool. We got some kind of extra dimensionality there. Mm -hmm. um, now, here's, here's where this gets a little tough to <laughs> envision, because we, we, can't, we, can't, we can't picture another dimension. You know, mm -hmm. we, we can't picture what that would be like. Best thing that we have is to picture one dimension lower, mm -hmm. so Flatland, which we've talked a lot about mm -hmm. uh, on the show. Um, so... Imagine, with, with the, this pillar idea, imagine that we had an actual two-dimensional earth, you know, a two-dimensional circle, and there were flatlanders on it. Mm -hmm. um, now, you could have something underneath mm -hmm. this earth, you know, in, in the third dimension, holding it up. You yeah. know, you could have pillars, essentially, mm -hmm. holding it up. And flatlanders wouldn't see it. They wouldn't be able to they would have no way of knowing that it was there. You know, right. they can't go up over the earth. They can't go under the earth because to them there is no up or down. That's right. So they would have no idea it's there. I think it's something similar to that idea. Mm -hmm. and, and what's cool about that is you, you could still have the, the earth, you know, mm -hmm. rotating, moving around, orbiting uh, with this thing underneath it, mm -hmm. you know. Imagine like if you have you have the two-dimensional earth and then you got a pillar under it. If I take the pillar and move it around, you know. <laughs> it's still. It, it, the, the flatlanders would see their earth it's as. Just, it's still just, set on a foundation. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's set regardless. on a foundation and it's, but it's still, but they wouldn't know that, you know. Right. They, they would look at it scientifically and say, well, it's, it's rotating and, you know, if I'm, if I'm spinning it around and I'm moving it around, uh -huh. it, it's, it's flying through space, it's rotating, but they wouldn't see like the propulsion mechanism, That's you know, right. they, they wouldn't see me holding it. Right. Uh, 
So I find that really interesting, and I, I think that might be sort of what we have here. I, I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> I think it can be something like that. There, there's a lot of things that we can't see, and there's a lot of, I do believe it's a small part of a bigger picture. Yeah. Because getting into uh, the extra dimensions and even breaching that time mm -hmm. a little bit, how, how in the Bible, in Ephesians, I believe it's Ephesians, where he says, we're already with him. Mm -hmm. he, sees a, he sees us seated with him. Right. Yeah, he, he, we're already seated we're with him already, in, yes. in the heavenlies. Yeah, right. Which is really cool. That's, which is and that's so really interesting. In, in, the, in the same, you can kind of take that and apply it to the extra mm -hmm. dimensions, because we can't see us there. Right. Yeah. He can, but we can't. We're and, still here. And what's weird <laughs> is when we're there, we might be able to see us now. Here, now. But we're conscious and aware now here, right. and not there, but we will be, and then we are. Yeah. <laughs> so it's totally weird. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I love it. I think that's I so cool. So so I, you can kind of marry the two. Yeah. You can, because we can't see us there, but he can see us there. We can't see the things that are holding this earth yeah. and the extra parts of it that yeah. are definitely there. Yeah, all, all, all we see is a, a, a spinning sphere, you know, spinning around, whipping around the sun. <laughs> Just and, whipping around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, 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 you know. Not and, doing and, anything important. Yeah, the, the way that we know that these aren't, you know, well, actually, okay, we'll get into like what literal means and what spiritual means when we come back because we got to cut for a break. Yes. Uh, so join us again right after this. The Trump administration is now vowing to crack down and punish deep state saboteurs. Today, America is being manipulated through a Washington-based shadow government. This is a war now, the deep state against you and the president of the United States. The artificial chaos engineered by elites and advanced by enemies of democracy is being propagandized by a devoted media machine to take down President Trump. I submit to you that the establishment that you talk about, that so-called deep state, exists on both sides, the left and the right, and President Trump is up against both of them. But this is not the whole story. A much more sinister quest behind the deep state is at work to usher in a final world order. He's an outsider. He's not them. He's not part of the club. You know, he hasn't been through the initiation rites. He didn't belong to the secret society. He didn't belong to the secret society. The secret society. They're trying to cheat you out of the future and the future that you want. They're trying to cheat you out of the leadership you want. Globalists, secret societies, and world power brokers anticipate the insidious arrival of a messianic strongman they call the Grey Champion. Now, for the first time ever, expert on occultism and best-selling author Dr. Thomas Horn joins a senior analyst from the Pentagon and a retired police detective to bring you the shocking truth behind an ancient cabal almost too fantastic to believe. If these forces are successful, this country will not survive. They have a plan for your future, but you can know their secret and stop them in their tracks. Get ready, saboteurs, how secret deep state occultists are manipulating American society toward a final world order. America is being manipulated by sinister occult forces and a Washington-based shadow government. But now, for the first time ever, expert on occultism and best-selling author Dr. Thomas Horn is joined by senior analyst from the Pentagon, Colonel Bob McGinnis, and retired police detective Carl Gallops to expose these nefarious forces. Skywatch TV is proud to announce the Saboteurs Collection. When you order the new books, Saboteurs, Gods and Thrones, and The Deeper State from Skywatch TV, you'll also receive free of charge for a limited time the exclusive oversized hardback collector editions of the classic two-volume set, The Devils and Evil Spirits of Babylonia, and The Fallen Angels and the Heroes of Mythology. These two timeless masterpieces, finally in print again after 100 years, are the perfect gift for the scholar or Bible student in your life and hold a retail value of over $60 all by themselves, but are included absolutely free when you purchase the limited-time Saboteurs Collection. 
But that's not all. You'll also receive the never-before-aired DVD, Off the Record, featuring exclusive interviews with Dr. Thomas Horn, Lieutenant Colonel Robert McGinnis, and Detective Carl Gallops, further exposing the dark secrets of globalist elites and how to stop them in their tracks. This content is only available in this exclusive offer and will not be aired anywhere else. Finally, you'll also receive The Shadow Hand, the over 24-hour Steve Quayle and Tom Horn definitive audio series on CD. This audio collection discloses the terrifying truth behind the infamous WikiLeak dumps, the shadow government, and so much more. This unprecedented special offer sold separately holds a retail value of over $175. Yours now for only $29.99 plus shipping and handling. The holiday gift season is coming and you won't find this collection anywhere else. So don't delay. Order the Saboteurs Collection for somebody you love now at skywatchtvstore.com or call 1-844-750-4985. Welcome back to Into the Multiverse. So right before the break, uh, we were talking about, because I almost said, and I want to be careful how I say this, mm -hmm. I almost said, you know, the way that we know that this isn't literal, it, it is, it is, people, I think, get the wrong idea of what literal actually is. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, when yeah, something's sure. not literal or if something's spiritual or if something's metaphorical, it doesn't mean it's wrong or it's a lie or it's false no. you know it doesn't no, mean that not. it doesn't make it any less true actually in a lot of ways it's more true mm -hmm. um but and, and and it's not that these things aren't physical but because they they are but it's again it's not something that we it's not something that we could see in our physical space mm -hmm. so it would affect gravity mm -hmm. um we wouldn't be able to see it uh, we wouldn't be able to have any kind of interaction with it because it's it's in another dimension, but it can still connect mm -hmm. to the earth, just like the pillar under the flatland earth can connect to mm -hmm. their earth. And even if they, you know, dug into their own earth, <laughs> they would they would never be able to find it because right. they, they don't have it. So we also, um, the, the going back to the foundations, okay, so in order to prove a point, God is asking Job a series of questions. And right. this, this is really cool. And this is from 38, uh, chapter 38 of Job. So it says, um, where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if, if thou hast understanding. I, I should have got the ESV or something. <laughs> I think this is the King James and yep. it's, it, it's a little lispy. Um, <laughs> if thou hast understanding, uh, <laughs> who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest, or who hath stretched the line upon it? Uh, Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened, or who laid the cornerstone thereof when the morning stars sang together and all the, sun, uh, all the sons of God shouted for joy? Uh, that, that passage are, is already important because it defines for us who the sons of God are from mm -hmm. you know, back in Genesis 6. Right. Uh, but the, the point of these questions is to show Job that there are things going on that he's unable to know. You know he, mm -hmm. God wasn't looking for a literal answer for, from him. You know, right. it, it was to show him like, look, who do you think you are? I'm right. God, you're you. Yep. you. You know, get it together, man. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so, um, you know, where was Job, you know, at the foundations of the earth? He wasn't even born yet. And th right. this was a completely unknowable time. Mm -hmm. um, where of are or where are the foundations fastened? You know, so as we saw earlier, it seems like they're fastened in heaven, somewhere in extra dimensional space, which again would be unknowable to mm -hmm. Job. Uh, Job. So the whole the whole point isn't to teach Job a science lesson here. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's to tell him, look, there's a lot more going on than what you see. I'm the one in control. You're not. You know, mm -hmm. uh, so you need to trust in me that that I, I know I know what I'm doing. <laughs> um, this also brings us to uh, extra dimensional waters in the firmament. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of, the firmament especially, there's a lot of question as to what that means. Mm -hmm. Some people have some ideas. We tend to disagree. It's okay. <laughs> but, and, that, and that's fine. I have good friends. Um, yeah, I, my, my whole deal with that is I, I get why people want to believe that it, it's awesome. it's a literal physical yeah. three-dimensional thing you sure. know that exists mm -hmm. in in our space right i personally don't agree because mm -hmm. i think that there's a, a lot of times when we talk about when, when it talks about these these constructs of the earth like mm -hmm. the four corners that's another thing that we could get into uh, or the firmament or um you know the pillars and the foundation all these things mm -hmm. there 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 always seems to be spiritual type of language associated yes. with it like the four yep. corners there's like angels involved you know mm -hmm. there, there's always some kind of 
spiritual, we, we would say extra dimensional. Yeah, I was just going to say extra dimensional yeah. aspect. Yeah. And now it is true, you know, they, they did have uh, back then, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a certain view of cosmology that, that we don't really have today, uh, or many, many of us don't, some do. But, um, but I think you could take those same exact Bible verses and make a case mm -hmm. that this is extra dimensional constructs going on and actually have it supported with science because of this extra gravity thing. Right. Uh, so it's just sure. a different interpretation and there's nothing wrong with that. And I don't, I'm not trying to, we're not trying to start any fights with anybody, you know, nope. this is, this is just what we believe, you know, I, and I think it's one of those things. It's like, if you have something wrong with you, you go to a bunch of different doctors and depending on their special spe uh, specialty, that's the answer you're going to get. You know, right, if you yeah. see an oncologist, you have cancer. If you see a dermatologist, you have a skin condition. You know, um, I, I, I kind of think of it that way. We're into quantum physics, so we see it in, in places that other people might not. Right. It doesn't mean we're right, and it doesn't mean we're wrong. Right. <laughs> it's just uh, uh, it's just a different interpretation. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I, I wanted to make sure that we laid that out. Of course. B before we get into the, the firmament stuff, because mm -hmm. there are times that people will try to start fights with us over this. I'm not going to fight. Me either. I don't want to. I love you just the same. I don't want to say you're wrong because I could be wrong and I'm right. never going to do that. I'm never going to say that I'm wrong, you're right, or you're, mm -hmm. you're wrong and I'm right. Mm -hmm. I just don't think that's the way to handle it. Yeah, me too. I, I have I think very it's... good friends who tend to disagree with my view and we're friends just the same. Sure. Yeah, same here. And, uh, yeah, so I, I don't have any any problem with the other end of this. We all have limited information. Right. Yeah. We all we all don't see the the big big picture because just like we're, Job, we we're can't. right we're right here. <laughs> yeah. We're in three dimensions. We have a fourth dimension aspect to us, which is our soul, and that is all we have. Mm -hmm. We have text from the Bible, and mm -hmm. it's how you take that text. Yeah. We're not wrong. We're not right. There's right. more to it than what we can see. Yeah, and, and we might have a piece of it. And there, there's a lot of situations where it might not be either or. It mm -hmm. might be both and. Yes. You know, it could be two, two, two things could be uh, true. Even if they seem mutually exclusive on our end, that doesn't mean that they necessarily are. So there's different ways to interpret different passages mm -hmm. and you know, as long as somebody, to me, as long as somebody's doing it to the, for, for the glory of God and they're not trying to say, well, G Jesus isn't really the Savior, or if they're trying to say, well, you know, you're, uh, Yahweh is evil and here's why, you know, it, that, that stuff is all garbage. Mm -hmm. But if it's just something like, well, what, what's the pillars of the earth, you know, it, it, was that just a wrong idea that they had back then? Or is it like a physical thing that is really there? Or mm -hmm. is it something that's like in heaven and we can't see it, but it still interacts with the earth somehow? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, there's different ways to look at it. And I think it's good to keep an open mind and to uh, have a, mm -hmm. you know, a dialogue. Um, so I understand uh, why people believe the, 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 the firmament interpretation of, you know, the dome and the whole deal. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, I get all that. I, I personally don't agree. There's, there's a couple reasons why. So first though, First, though, I want to talk about this extra dimensional waters before we get to the firmament. Yeah. Cause I think this, I think this is really cool. It's really awesome. Uh, there actually might have been an extra dimensional source for most, if not all, of the water on Earth. This is, and this is really cool. I mean, of course, everything has a, an extra dimensional source because it's all from God. Yes. But uh, so Genesis 1 7 says, And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. Uh, so we learned that God made something called a firmament, you know, that, that's the information we have so far. And, uh, the purpose of this firmament was divide, to divide waters above and below. Um, so we get, we get another clue in Genesis one, eight, which says, and God called the firmament heaven and the evening and the morning were the second day. And then Genesis one twenty says, uh, and God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. Mm -hmm. And we also get uh, Genesis 1, 16 through 17, which says, and God made two great lights, the greater light to rule uh, the day, the lesser light to rule the night. And he made stars also. And God set them in the firmament 
of the heaven to give light upon the earth. Mm -hmm. So we, we learn three things. We, we learn first that the firmament was called heaven. Second, mm -hmm. the firmament is open and birds can fly in it, mm -hmm. uh, not under it, not above it, in, in it. Mm -hmm. And third, that the, the sun, moon, and stars are also in the firmament. Mm -hmm. So the first verse might make us think that the firmament is something that's purely spiritual because you know it's called heaven. Uh, but the second and third verses uh, negate that theory. The second verse might lead us to believe that the firmament is just the air above the earth. You know that it's it's that's all it is. Uh, maybe even the upper atmosphere. Mm -hmm. But the third verse negates that too because <laughs> we have the sun and the moon. You know. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that now the third verse might make us think that the firmament is outer space, mm -hmm. you know, um, but the second verse negates that. <laughs> so, so what do we do with all this? Uh, now, and, and th this is, this is partly why I, I get why some people say, well, then there just isn't any outer space and everything's under a, a dome thing, even, even though it says in and not under, or, you know, but, uh, I, and I understand the arguments for that. Uh -huh. Um, but. And then, and then there's also uh, something called the canopy theory, which uh, the canopy. Kent Hovind. Th yeah, yeah, that's right. That, yeah, yep. Kent Hovind. Kent, Kent Hovind. Yeah. Yeah, he, he talked about how a long time ago there might have been, um, there might have been like, uh, like an ice sheet or water or something surrounding the globe. And then when the flood happened, it collapsed. And that's where all the water came from. Yeah. Um, I don't believe that <laughs> uh, personally. It's an, it's an interesting theory. It's, but, a, it's, yeah. a, it's interesting. I, but I, I think it, like all of these, and that's the thing too, that, that theory, like all these theories and even ours has problems. Mm -hmm. You know, even our theory here is, is going to have some problems. Mm -hmm. But um, Genesis 120 tells us that birds fly above the earth yet, in the open firmament uh, mm -hmm. of heaven. So if the firmament is something solid or liquid, you know, encompassing the entire earth, bird, birds wouldn't be able to fly in it. Right. You know, uh, they could fly under it, mm -hmm. but that, that's not that's not what it says. Also, the idea of something solid or liquid encompassing the earth wouldn't be described as open, mm -hmm. likely, you know, not an open thing. If it was something enclosing the earth, it should be described as closed, mm -hmm. you know, the complete opposite. Um, so, it's something that the birds can fly in. It's something that can contain the sun, moon, stars, and it's something that could be referred to as heaven. So here's what I think. <laughs> I think the firmament is either a divide between dimensions or mm -hmm. it is an extra dimension. Mm -hmm. Now, people might think, yeah, but birds aren't extra dimensional. <laughs> but all dimensions are made up of the dimensions underneath it. So if yeah. you, you have the three dimensions, uh -huh. three, the three dimensions that we exist in are made of the, the second dimension and the first dimension, you know, stacked up and lined up. And so the fourth dimension, I, I would think would be similar. So imagine again, the, the two dimensional earth thing, you know, mm -hmm. you got the pillar underneath it, we're moving it around, you know, we're scaring everybody. And <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Flatlanders are scared oh, because they're okay. like, what, what's All going right. on? All right, I got and, you now. <laughs> and, <laughs> so you got these Flatlanders around <laughs> the earth. And then, um, see, I, I should have like cut out a piece of paper or something to, to kind of make this more visual, but people Here, will just use, have to... Use the thing. People will have to use their imaginations. Use a magazine. Um, uh, it'd be better if it was round, but... <laughs> so, so, okay, so you have Flatlanders that, you know, live on all... You know, all it's sides. Got four corners. Yeah. <laughs> well, that that's the reason this doesn't work is this is going to complicate our uh. our thought exercise later. But but it's okay. We can use it for now. Um, so you have a flatlander here. You know, let's say uh, ex existing, living his life, and then he looks. It wouldn't be up. It'd be like out. You out. know, he 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 looks Over. past him in the air and he sees little flatland birds. You know, mm -hmm. flying around. Um, to him, they're apart. They're they're in the air or whatever. But I could look at that and I could say that those birds are existing in my space too. Mm -hmm. You know, they're existing technically in the third dimension, mm -hmm. just one slice of it. Right. So you could consider that the, the open firmament or, or, or heaven, or, you know, they're still existing in that space. Mm -hmm. They're just in a very small section. And the Flatlander too, mm -hmm. by the way, like the Flatlander, uh, the entire earth would be like that. Um, so you, you could you could say that, and I, I think I think that's what it's getting at because that's the only thing 
I can think of where you know, the, the, the birds, the sun, the stars, the moon would all have in common, still be open mm -hmm. uh, and still be called heaven. How does mm -hmm. any of that make any sense? You know, I, I, think, I think that's how. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it's not that they're in an extra dimension. Uh, they, they, they are just part of a dimension that makes up a bigger one. Right. Just like our three-dimensional world makes, you know, likely is a very small section or a small slice of a four-dimensional reality, you know, so on and so forth. Makes um, sense. So I've been talking a lot. What are, you, what are your thoughts? <laughs> My thoughts on it. Here, I'll put this back with the rest of the magazines there. Um, I think it's all part of a bigger picture. Mm -hmm. like we've been talking about there's, there's stuff we can see, there's stuff we can't see, there's stuff. There's stuff, I feel like, how it is in the micro of everything is in the macro. We can't see with our with our eyes right, right. now, like without a microscope, certain things, um, like mm, the quarks or you know what the molecules and mm -hmm. atoms and things are. We can't see those those uh, electrons. But there, there's things we can't see, yeah, you know, like yeah. atoms and things like that. Yeah. Um, I. Yeah, we can I, see them with specialized equipment, right, but like with course, our naked but, eye, you can't. Not with the naked eye, right. not with the naked eye. Right. But they're still part of our existence. We're yeah. made up of all these molecules. Mm -hmm. they're, it, what we were discussing, we kind of uh, talked about it a little last night, like touching. Mm -hmm. Can't really touch anything right. because it's just the way the molecules react, the positive yeah, the, and negative. The electrons uh, are, are pushing against each other and because of charge. Uh, yes. Yeah, you're right. And yeah, because electrons, uh, you know, they, they, they're, they're all charged in a way that they repel one another. Mm -hmm. It's almost like kitchen magnets. So that repulsion is actually what you're, what you're feeling. What you're feeling. Yeah, which exactly. is it's weird. Yeah. So you can't actually, the only, the only true touch you could mm -hmm. ever have is through quantum tunneling, I yes. think. <laughs> and, and that is we one talked of about my that favorite on, subjects about yeah. quantum physics is the quantum tunneling. Yeah, my, my, mine too. <laughs> awesome. So we can't see it with our naked eye, mm -hmm. but it's there. It exists with us. Yeah. Same with those you know, with the Flatlanders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, uh, and and what's cool about the whole water thing with this, uh, the extra dimensional waters idea is, it, it says that the firmament splits the water above from the waters below. And I, I, I actually, when you look at the word above, above can mean beyond. Yes. Uh, yep. it, it can mean, and I, I, I kind of take it as it, it, something beyond, something spiritual, yes. extra dimensional. So let's say you have the, the, the Flatland Earth thing, you know, you have it in your living room, let's say. Mm -hmm. And you decide that you want to give the Flatlanders some water on their Flatland Earth, you know. Uh, so you could take like an eyedropper full of water and you can put water in mm -hmm. there. And now to them, if you're dropping water on the edge of, of this Earth, they're not going to see where the water's coming from. Okay. They'll just, there's just water now. Mm -hmm. Like they, they, they would see it li like just come into their existence, mm -hmm. you know, in, into their reality. But what what's happening is is you have a divide between the second and uh, third dimensions that the flatlander can't see. There's the firmament there, that's essentially dividing the water from the water. You mm -hmm. know, it's dividing the source of the water from the actual water that's on the flatland Earth. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think that's something similar. Uh, now imagine this. Imagine if you put it next to a window. Mm -hmm. And you open the window and it's raining. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, all this water is coming gushing into the, the, the flat land earth. Mm -hmm. And they don't know where the water's coming from, mm -hmm. but there's a lot more water than there used to be, you know. <laughs> and uh, depending how the water is falling to them, it could look like that it's coming up out of their earth. Well, not up, but, you know, coming out of their earth, you know. Because uh -huh. if you're pouring a bunch of it on the middle of it and it spreads, it spreads out that out. way. Um, it, it could look like it's just coming from all directions, but it's just appearing. You know, they're not seeing the source. Right. That that might be what happened with the flood. <laughs> right. Um, now, I, I, I do believe that likely there there used to be a lot of water underneath the earth. And actually, yes. I think that's why we have oceans now. Those are the caved in parts. Yes. You know, because it does say that, you know, the fountains broke open from the deep. But there are places where the deep seems like it's something extra dimensional because this is something where like, uh, you know, dead things, you know, pe people that are, are like fallen angels and demons or people that have died. You know, it, it talks about the deep in almost in this or the abyss. We, we, the abyss. It, it's synonymous with the abyss. So like fallen angels and stuff are there. Mm -hmm. So it seems like it's something, uh, something extra dimensional. Mm -hmm. I think it, 
Uh, I think so, because there is definitely something extra dimensional to the Earth, because there are par parts of our Earth where we can't find the bottom of the oceans or the, even the lakes. Lake Superior uh, in Michigan, there are there are places there where they'll send the cameras down, and once they get past a certain point, the cameras start stop working, mm -hmm. and they still haven't found the bottom. Right. And also in the Atlantic Ocean, there's a trench there mm -hmm. where they try to find the bottom, but it goes too deep and they can't find it. Yeah, it's... it's so it's very, I think that there's extra dimensions there. I think so too. You know, and, and this kind of brings other passages like Psalm uh, 104, 3 through 13 uh, into clearer perspective. This is, this is like, so taking everything that we've talked about so far, uh, th this is really cool. Um, he lays the, the beams of his upper chambers in the waters, who makes the clouds his chariot, who walks on the wings of the wind, uh, who makes his angels spirits, his ministers a flame of fire. You who laid the foundations of the earth so that it should not be moved forever. You, uh, you covered it with the deep as with a garment. The water stood above the mountains. At your rebuke, they fled at the voice of your thunder. They hastened away. They went up over the mountains. They went down into the valleys to the place which you founded for them. You have set a boundary that they may not pass over, that they may not return to cover the earth. He sends the springs into the valleys. They flow among the hills. They give drink to every beast of the field. The wild donkeys quench their thirst. By them, the birds of the heavens have their home. They sing among the branches. Uh, he waters the hills from his upper chambers. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of your works. So that's really cool, taking all this stuff about water and firmament and extra dimensions into account. Uh, I, I think that's really cool because that, that kind of pieces everything together. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, and, and that part where it, it's, it says, um, uh, you laid the foundation so it shouldn't be moved forever. Well, right. again, you can have the, the flatland earth and the pillar underneath it. Mm -hmm. um, that thing is going to be stuck to that pillar. Like it's not moving yeah. off of that pillar. Right. <laughs> you know, uh, you're not, you're not knocking it down off the pillar or anything. Right. You can move the pillar around. Sure. Uh, so I, I think, I think that that's really interesting uh, because there, there, there are, you know, there are certain atheists and stuff that say, you know, well, it says that the earth can't be moved. So, uh, you know, we, but we know it is. So, you know, the Bible's wrong. And it's like, well, that was their interpretation of science back then, you know, so really who cares? You know, we, we don't expect uh, ancient Israelites to be scientists. Right. It doesn't mean they were stupid. They looked at the world totally different than we do. You know, mm -hmm. they didn't have a materialistic, scientific, 21st century American, Western world, you know, uh, point of view. But, even if somebody doesn't like that idea, you know, because uh, I, I like it just fine. I think that's that's all it really needs to be. But if, if somebody rejects that idea and they want it, they want it to be something scientific, mm -hmm. then, well, look, then it can just be something extra dimensional and the verses still work fine. Um, so, uh, again, it's just a different interpretation. We might have a similar thing with the dry land appearing from beyond. Mm -hmm. uh, Genesis 1.9 says, And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together in one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. Now that word appear, um, it, it, as used in this verse, comes from the Hebrew word ra'ah. And it seems to give a distinction of something that's already existing, yet is now able to be seen or perceived. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and a really good source for this kind of stuff is blueletterbible.com. Mm -hmm. Absolutely love it. Uh, you can look at the Strong's Concordance and actually, but, um, but we, we can compare it with Genesis 12, seven. It says, and the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, unto thy seed, uh, I'll, I will give this land, you know, right. so on and so forth. It doesn't mean that at that moment the Lord was created and he came into existence and he didn't exist before. Right. <laughs> you know, he, he, it, and it's that same word. He, he appeared. He existed before, but now Abram can see him. See him. He, he, yep. he appeared. So appeared doesn't have to mean that this is when it was created. It, it could have been created earlier mm -hmm. and this is just when it appeared, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so we could have something like that. So we can look at the, 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 the flat land earth idea again <laughs> same idea with the water you know but let's say now we're putting dirt and stuff you know we're putting mm -hmm. land uh, on uh on the flat land earth or whatever we're putting land on there mm -hmm. well 
it exists, <laughs> you know, it exists before the Flatlanders can see it. Right. And if we put it on there to, to a Flatlander, it's just appearing. Oh, wow, you know, yeah. if, if It's we, like, oh, look, magic. Yeah, it, it would just it would just come into existence. Mm -hmm. So we might have something like that. Um, and this actually, this is really cool. This brings us to the circle and the footstool. Uh, so what, what's the circle of the Earth? Because this is something that's been hotly debated too. You know, is it the equator? Is it the orbit of the Earth? Is it the Earth itself? So Isaiah 40, 22 says, It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the Earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers, that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain, and spreadeth them out as a... Uh, tent to dwell in. So the idea of it being stretched out, you know, we, we could think of the, you know, the, the flatland earth again, the third dimension to them would be stretched out all yes. over the place, you know. Uh, so it, we, it could have something to do with that. But we learn that there's something that God sits upon called the circle of the earth. Mm -hmm. This is where God is sitting. Uh, now, this is something that God is sitting upon, you know, in some fashion. So the circle of the earth is not something purely physical. <laughs> it right. can't be. It can't be something where, you know, if the circle of the earth is somehow the earth itself or a piece of the earth itself in physical reality, and God's sitting on that, like, well, God's not just a three-dimensional, you know, he can take that form, but he's not, by his nature, he's not merely three-dimensional and because and because some people have said you know well if the earth is whipping around you know how can god sit how, how can the earth be god's footstool if the earth is moving and you know doing all this stuff it's like well that's that's like taking it really hyper literally you know he god's not like a three-dimensional being literally resting his feet you know and then trying to keep up with the earth and you know it, 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 it's not like it's not it's not <laughs> like that um but so th think about this. If we, if the, it, but if the, if the circle of the earth is something extra dimensional, then then this starts to make a lot of sense. Uh, Psalm eight um, actually kind of gives us a clue here. Okay, and we're going to talk more about that when we come back from the break. We do have to take a break, so stay with us. Could there exist a master blueprint from ancient times that is determining the events of modern times? Is it possible that an ancient mystery lies behind current events, including the rise and fall of leaders, governments, and even the presidents of the United States? Could a blueprint from the ancient Middle East actually foretell the events of our day so precisely it even reveals when these events must take place, down to the year and even the exact days? The master blueprint in the paradigm even revealed the date of 9-11, years before it took place. From Jonathan Kahn, the selling author of The Harbinger, The Mystery of the Shemitah, and The Book of Mysteries, comes The Paradigm, the ancient blueprint that holds the mystery of our times. In his most explosive book to date, Jonathan Kahn opens up the master blueprint that is now unfolding before our eyes. How has the paradigm already affected your life? And how will it impact your future? Khan takes you on a journey from Middle Eastern landscapes to Washington, D.C., from ancient palaces to the White House, from mysterious priests and priestesses to ruthless kings and queens, from gods and goddesses to prophets and holy men. What does the mystery reveal about what lies ahead? And what is the warning it contains? You will be stunned and amazed at the revelations contained in Khan's most explosive book yet. One thing is certain, once the veil is removed, you will never see the world in the same way again. Find out more when you read Jonathan Khan's The Paradigm, the ancient blueprint that holds the mystery of our times. Are you ready for the best deal anywhere on Jonathan Kahn's newest works? Now, while supplies last, when you purchase New York Times best-selling author Rabbi Jonathan Kahn's brand new book, The Paradigm, from Skywatch TV, you'll receive an unprecedented special offer. Skywatch TV is proud to announce the ultimate Paradigm collection. When you purchase Paradigm from the Skywatch TV store, you'll receive The Tales of a Wandering Prophet by author Hugh B. Sin. The minister who spoke to Jonathan Kahn before he released his breakout book, The Harbinger, and prophesied that it would indeed become a New York Times bestseller before it actually happened. 
In this book, Hubie shows you how to hear from God and demonstrates how God can use anyone for His glory. You'll also receive Jonathan Kahn's best-selling books, The Book of Mysteries and The Mystery of the Shemitah. But that's not all. In this incredible limited-time offer, we'll also include two full-length special presentations on DVD by Rabbi Jonathan Kahn himself. In the six heavenly entities, Khan reveals how God chose to use the Hebrew language to communicate His Word, and how the awesome reality of God is often diluted when the English language is the only one used to interpret Scripture. In the cosmic Bride and Bridegroom, you'll discover that one of the greatest mysteries in Scripture is often clouded by common misconceptions regarding our relationship to Christ. Sold separately, this exclusive offer retails for more than $120, yours now for only $29.99 plus shipping and handling. You won't find this collection anywhere else, so don't delay. Order the Ultimate Paradigm Collection now at skywatchtvstore.com or call 1-844-750-4985. Welcome back to Into the Multiverse. So let's just jump right back into it uh, where we left off. Psalm 8, 24 through 27 says, uh, When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water. Before the mountains were settled, before the hills, I was brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the depth. So, this whole idea of uh, of the the compass on the face of the depth. Mm -hmm. Now, based on that, uh, based on the same Hebrew word used there for face of the depth, it's the same as face of the deep from Genesis mm -hmm. one two. Uh, yeah. And also, compass in that passage is the same Hebrew word for circle mm -hmm. in Isaiah forty twenty two. Mm -hmm. So this is why it can't just be a part of the earth somewhere because in that passage it said that the earth is, wasn't created yet. Right. Yeah. Before there was an earth, yes. there was this compass thing. There was this yes. circle. There was this, you know, so, so what does that mean? And it says while, uh, and it talks about heaven. Um, what, what, when he prepared the heavens. Yes. So when he was doing whatever he was doing on a spiritual level in mm -hmm. extra dimensional space and he was creating all that stuff, that, that was when this circle thing was, mm -hmm. you know, was, uh, was created. And then he set, he set the compass upon the face of the depth. And, and again, we talked about what the deep is that it's like this abyss thing that, that seems to be an extra dimensional space. Yeah. So, uh, so the circle can't be something just physical and that's why we're not talking about a literal, thing that God's mm -hmm. sitting on. The way that I kind of look at this is, you know, imagine the flatland earth again. We're going to be going back to that a lot. And let's say, you know, you, you have the flatland earth. Let's say I put something like a, a throne or something right, right in the middle, mm -hmm. you know, or, or a, a pile of dirt or a mountain. I make my own holy mountain mm -hmm. uh, right there in, in the middle, yeah. reaching up into the third dimension. Flatlanders can't see that. Nope. They, they could even dig into their own earth and they're not ever going to get to what I created because they have no up or down. That's right. So they would have no interaction with it. Now, I could have created that earlier and then after I did the flatland earth thing, I could have set it down on there. I think that this is, this is what it's saying. Uh, it, it's well, it makes sense because we can't, we can't perceive on our kata. Right. And yeah, our the, the two extra dimensions. The, to yeah. make up the fourth dimension. Yeah. So... It makes sense. The flatlanders can't see the third dimension. We can't see the fourth dimension. We can experience certain aspects of the fourth dimension, but we cannot perceive in our mind what Ana or Kata, the two extra dimensions, even look like. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, so that that's that, that's really interesting to me. And um, we get the same idea too from Isaiah sixty six one, which says, "Thus saith the Lord, the heavens." Uh, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where, mm -hmm. uh, where is the house that ye built unto me? Where is the place for my rest? Mm -hmm. So in a sense, the, the circle of the earth thing and the earth itself are, are similar, but scripture makes clear that they're not the same thing entirely. So this isn't like a piece of the earth. This isn't something physical. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems that the, the circle of the earth is more, more connected with you know, the holy mountain of God, like we, mm -hmm. we just talked about a minute ago. And that's described, like Isaiah 65, 25 talks about that. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together and the lion shall eat straw like a bullock and uh, dust shall be uh, the serpent's meat. They shall not hurt uh, nor destroy in all my holy mountain, saith the Lord. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, the 
prophet John talks about uh, uh, Revelation 21.10 says, And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of uh, heaven from God. Mm -hmm. And then uh, verses 22 and 26 of the first chapter of Ezekiel uh, gives us a good representation of the uh, idea of this extra dimensional construction. Mm -hmm. uh, so Ezekiel uh, sees these cherubim from heaven. You know, we've talked about this a lot on the show uh, that, uh, that they're supporting this type of platform upon which sits, you know, the throne of God. So Ezekiel 122 says, and the likeness of the firmament above the living creature was the color of a terrible crystal stretched forth over their heads above. And then Isaiah 126 says, and above the firmament was, oh, uh, Ezekiel, not, Isai uh, not Isaiah, excuse me. Uh, but, and above the firmament that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne as it appeared, uh, the like, uh, as the appearance of a sapphire stone and upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness of the appearance of a man above it. So it's interesting that this platform thing is called a firmament. Now imagine if I wanted to explain to a flatlander how, you know, my mountain and my throne on like on his earth sort of and up <laughs> like how how does that work you know how how could i represent that to him mm -hmm. well i would have to do i would have to show him something two dimensional yes. otherwise he he can't he just can't comprehend any right. you know he can't see it at all if it's not uh and i i would have to create something that tries to show a three dimensional object in two dimensions it would look really similar to that. You know, mm -hmm. it would have to, it would look similar to like, you, you have something that's being held up mm -hmm. and you have God sitting on top of it. it. It would, it would look similar to that. If I'm trying to do the pillar and the earth and the pile of, you know, the mountain and the, the throne on top, uh, it, it would have to look similar to that. What, what do you think? Well, like you said, you would have to take something two dimensional. Uh, you would have to explain to him, okay, a triangle, really. Uh -huh. Yeah. Two dimensional yeah. triangle. And then, but then you have to explain them. Now turn that triangle upwards. Yeah, and you could and never you can, explain you it. You can't explain <laughs> up, just like we can't explain on our kata. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, yeah, it, it is. Uh, it's it's such a deep subject when it comes to extra extra dimensional things, and we try to explain. We try to we try to wrap our heads around it ourselves mm -hmm. by going down a dimension you know we're in three dimensions so we try to look at something two-dimensional to try to wrap our head around something yeah. that is four-dimensional or above yeah. which is insane to me i still cannot explain ana or kata and yeah, me either. <laughs> i want to know <laughs> ana and kata but i yeah. i it, the, the, it, it's interesting to me that the higher you go you need two more di directions yeah and and for those uh who who didn't catch that episode anna and kata are the names uh that actually charles hinton i believe uh gave th those are the two names to the two new directions that you would have in the fourth dimension so yes. every, every time you go up a di dimension you, you get need two, two more directions yeah. and we have up down left right yeah and, and then, forward backward and forward backward yeah so going up a dimension we mm -hmm. would have up down left right forward backward anna uh, and, and kata. kata yeah <laughs> which we Explain can't wrap anna our heads and, kata. and what it would is be that? yeah it would be perpendicular to all the other ones because they're always perpendicular so you know you have the first dimension the line well two perpendicular di uh, directions apart from that that's where you get your other two mm -hmm. two perpendicular directions out from that that's now where do you go from there mm -hmm. <laughs> you know how how can there be anymore we can't imagine it but a flatlander wouldn't be able to imagine up or down no. you know they would say no, so you'd have well to you have two triangle, you got four. but it would have a different direction yeah. you know it would it's called up and they'd yeah. be like what yeah they would have no clue so you would have to you'd have to show them something in their own terms so right. i mean you're right uh th this is interesting the bars of the earth we we get we get something here too um it, it seems like there's extra dimensional like bars or, or like a jail or, or something. Uh, Jonah 2, 5 through 7. This is where we get this from. And it's really interesting because the actual story of Jonah and what happened is so different than mm -hmm. what we're taught in Sunday school. Um, I, I think he actually died. You know, he actually died and was revived. Because he, here it says, The waters compassed me about even to the soul. The mm. depth closed me round about. The weeds were wrapped uh, about my head. Um, 
I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever. Oh. Yet hast thou brought me up, uh, brought up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. When my soul fainted within me, mm -hmm. I remembered my, uh, the Lord and my prayer came in unto thee, into thine holy temple. So verse five tells us that the water surrounded Jonah, uh, even to the soul. And we read that the depth closed about him. And this was after Jonah was thrown off the boat. And this mm -hmm. is before, you know, the, the fish came or the whale or whatever people want to uh, say that it is. But uh, different words here, uh, different Hebrew words here are used for waters and depth. Depth comes from uh, to home. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that is the more like, uh, it, it can also mean abyss and, and grave, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so we read that the weeds under the water were wrapped around his head. And verse six tells us that he went down to the bottoms of the mountain. Uh, so it's likely at that point that Jonah had actually drowned and mm -hmm. he was headed for Sheol. Uh, and we, we, we can, you know, to further support that, jo uh, Jonah 2.6, it says the Lord spake unto the fish, or, or uh, no, excuse me. Jonah 2.6 says that the Lord brought up Jonah's life from corruption. Mm. Uh, and that, that Hebrew word for corruption means um, like pit, destruction, grave. It's mm -hmm. the same kind of idea. He died. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but God brought him back to life. Uh, and Jonah 2.10 actually says, and the Lord spake unto the fish and it vomited out Jonah from uh, uh, upon the dry land. So I think that's when Jonah actually came back to life after three days. Yeah. And that, that, that to me is more miraculous uh, and it makes more sense that how, how do you live? You can't be alive like inside of a fish that's digesting your body and like, it doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. Um, e even if it's a whale or whatever, but if he actually died and the fish is like digesting him, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, that's, that's a huge miracle, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Uh, so that, that's really cool. Uh, there, there's a lot of this kind of stuff. Um, I, I want to kind of skip ahead because there's the four corners, the ends of the earth. People have to get the book to, to get all of it. There, there's, there's a lot of this kind of stuff um, that we won't have time to get to. I mean, we could just do 10 episodes on it, really. Oh, I know. <laughs> I think it's fascinating in the Bible where God speaks about saying that he'll separate his, the sins, our sins from as, oh, far, as, as far as the, the east, east is, is from, from the west. west. Yeah, I think which that's is basically... More. Infinite, infinite, you know, <laughs> yeah. And I, I think, yeah, I think that's really cool too. Uh, that, that kind of language in the Bible always really intrigues me because it's, it, I mean, it's, I, it, it, and again, it's because we're into quantum physics. So we're going to see physics everywhere we look, but I, it, 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 I don't know. It's just, that stuff is really cool. Math is everywhere. <laughs> and I love our daughter because Jacqueline will see math in everything. She, she loves math. She, this girl, she's in first grade and she is testing way higher in math. Yeah. And, and I did the same thing in school. I was really good at math. I, she understands it. She, over the summer from kindergarten before she hit first grade, she was asking Josh and I how to do the vertical addition program of uh, problems. Yeah. And she, she got it. She, we sat she totally and did a bunch of it. math problems she just as our family 10. time. Yeah. <laughs> she knew 10 plus 10 and she knew, she knew 100 plus 100. And yeah. she knew, um, I, I told her I, when I explained it to her, mm -hmm. when we went to her open house for first grade, she looked at the numbers that she was going to be learning. She's like, whoa, one <laughs> to 120. How do you even get that? Yeah. <laughs> and I said, Jacqueline, start at 100. Mm -hmm. What's 100 plus 10? Mm -hmm. If I, you have 100 things and you add 10 more things, what is it? She's like, 110. I'm like, yeah. what's 10 plus 10? Well, 20. Yeah, she's a pro now. She well, totally gets it. <laughs> and I'm like, you are going to do just fine in yeah. first grade. Yeah. And she, and she does. And and she gets subtraction. I, I just, this, this girl, at first it was scary to her. She wanted to do the big numbers. Yeah. And she sees math and everything. So, so she'll be, she'll be there and asking what's 1000 plus whatever, or minus whatever, mm -hmm. and a, or minus a thousand. I said, well, if you have 1000 things and you take them all away, mm -hmm. how many things do you have left? She's like, well, nothing. I was yeah. like, that's it. That's, that's easy. That's yeah, she's easy. really smart. So now she's thinking in mathematics in everything that she does. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and the things that she comes up with, I just cannot get over it. Yeah, she's brilliant. Yeah, I'm, I'm really proud of her. Um, she, she's amazing. And yeah, and so I, I always find it interesting that there's a lot of that kind of stuff in the Bible, too. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, I, you know, I figure if our daughter can see it, you know, in, in 
just our world, you know, I, I kind of, that's it, kind of comparable to like us seeing it in, in higher things. But yeah, but yeah, I mean, there people have to, people end up having to get the book because there's just so much of this, but there, you know, it talks about the four corners, the ends of the earth, even Nebuchadnezzar's tree, mm -hmm. uh, the tree of Nebuchadnezzar, because imagine, and people are people, cause people are like, you know, well, how can a tree cover the, the whole earth? You know, well, for one thing, it was a dream. So, uh -huh. uh, but, uh, or it was a vision or whatever, but um, think about it in terms of an extra dimensional tree. You know, mm -hmm. you have your flatland earth again. Mm -hmm. If you have a tree in the middle and the branches are coming out all, o you know, all over and hanging down, well, that's how you can have a tree cover the whole earth, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, and it even says that like it fed the birds and stuff. Now it would look really weird to a person of the, of like a flatlander. It would just look like a, a, bran a piece of a branch is just there hovering, you know, uh, not connected to anything because they wouldn't see the whole tree. But again, this is, this is a vision, uh, or, or, or a dream. Uh, so there's, there's that, um, how a stationary earth can be in motion that I, I, I wrote a lot about that too. Psalm 93, one talks about, and, and it, it's similar. There's a lot more to it that we just won't have time to get into, but it's similar to the idea of moving the pillar. Mm -hmm. You know, the earth is still stationary, it, on the anywhere. pillar, you know, yeah. but you can move, you, you move the pillar yeah. and, um, and all that stuff. Now this, this is cool. And I do, I do want to touch on this if we have time before, uh, before the cameras turn off because we're <laughs> filling up these cards, but, uh, uh, th this is really cool. Seeing from a higher dimensional perspective. Now at the return of Jesus, we're told throughout the Bible that everyone in the world will see him. And there's been a lot of ideas on how that could be possible. One of the leading ones as well, you know, there's going to be cell phones and, uh, people will upload videos and you can see it live and everything. It could be that it could be. Another idea that people have said is like, well, if the earth is actually flat, then, you know, if, if Jesus comes down, then everybody would be able to see him. No, because I can't see the sky over Jerusalem. I can't even see the sky in uh, the next state over, you know, right. like I can't see an airplane that's flying in Ohio. You right. know, we just our eyes aren't aren't that good. No. You know, if mm -hmm. Jesus is descending on the Mount of Olives, we're not going to be able to see that, mm -hmm. you know, but but. I think there is a way that we actually could see it. And it has to do with this. So Revelation 1, 7 says, Behold, he cometh with the clouds. Every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. And all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. So it says, even those who have pierced him. Now, there's, uh, there's ideas on what that means. Some people think, well, maybe it's the descendants of the Romans or something. Or I think it's literally those who crucified him are going to see him because I think that there's a type of fold of space, you know, a, a fold of the third dimension into the fourth dimension. Mm -hmm. Again, the flat, the flat land earth idea in, and let's say you, you, you take it, you take the edges and you just kind of fold them down, you know, kind of mm -hmm. like a draping a napkin over a, uh, over a cup or something. You, you, you fold it down. Now, as you're doing that, the flatlanders are, are, you know, they're moving in the third dimension. They, they mm -hmm. wouldn't necessarily, they would know something was up, you know, right. but they wouldn't really be able to understand what was happening because right. again, they don't have up or down. So they're still seeing everything, you know, in, in two dimensional perspective. But if you, if you move it up in a way, then you can show them who's sitting on the mountain, mm -hmm. you know, who's sitting on the throne. You, you can, you can show, and they would all be able to see that. Mm -hmm. uh, it wouldn't be as far away as, you know, as like Jerusalem is to us now, it would be a fold in space mm -hmm. where now it's a lot closer. Yeah. What's interesting too is if that's happening to the to a flatlander, you know, stars and stuff that are around in mm -hmm. two dimensional space would like disappear. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, because now you're seeing into a different dimension. A different dimension. You're seeing into hyperspace. Mm -hmm. Now, so here's why that's. Here's why that's interesting. And also, I, I think that we, we have an example of that in Matthew 4, 8 that says, The devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and show him all the kingdoms of the world, the glory of them. Well, I think, imagine you take a flatlander. Uh, now, now Jesus could have had extra dimensional perspective when he's in the spirit. You know, who, who, who knows how that worked? But you take a flatlander and you bring him up onto this mountain, mm -hmm. you, you know, you could show him all the kingdoms of the earth. Mm -hmm. You know, he could just look down and see them all. So we get some of this too from Zechariah 14, four, which says his feet shall stand on that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the middle 
uh, toward the east, toward the west, there shall, shall be a great valley. Half the, ha uh, half the mountains shall remove towards the north, half towards the south. So uh, again, how, how could we see that from here? Um, and I, I think this is how. Now, as I said before, you're, you're doing this to the Flatlanders, you know. Mm -hmm. They're seeing up at this throne and all the stuff that they're used to seeing, like mm -hmm. they would have their own two-dimensional sun or, you know, they, they would have all, it, it would all change yeah. and, and in a sense fall away. Mm -hmm. Well, here, here's what we got. Uh, Matthew 24, 29 through 30. Immediately after the tribulations of those days, the sun shall be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in, uh, in heaven, and shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. They shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Um, and then we also get that Revelation 21, 23, continuing with the theme, the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon to shine in it for the glory of God did lighten it and the lamb is the light thereof. So if, if, you, if you're folding it in that way, all that stuff would seem to disappear. You know, the, the sun wouldn't give its light. You know, the moon would be dark and the stars would fall away. Uh, and I do think a lot of that's angelic language, like with the star, you know, yeah. I, do, I do think a lot of that. But that, that could also be how those who have pierced him can even see him, you know, because mm -hmm. if they're in essentially another dimension and, and Sheol or Hades or, you know, what, whatever, hell, what, you know, if they're there, you know, and then this dimensional shift thing is happening, they'd be able to see him, yeah. see him too. A, a, everything in spiritual existence and physical it, existence it's would. It's another curtain falling away, just yeah. like in the tabernacle yeah. from the, in, from the Holy of Holies and the inner courts. And that's the a good courts. point. So it's just like another curtain being torn. Yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah, so so, you can so see into yeah the, uh, the the split between dimensions is in a sense done away with. Mm -hmm. uh, like if if you keep Flatlanders in their own two dimensional space, then there's a split between the second and third dimension for them. But if you're folding it, so now they're they're actually interacting with the third dimension in mm -hmm. a way. I mean, they would still see things in two dimensional perspective. Right. They 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 wouldn't know exactly what was happening, but they would know it would be horrifying. Yeah. Um, <laughs> They wouldn't. They wouldn't know that they're traveling in a, you know, traveling through another dimension to get this, ex, this, this perspective of, uh, of you know, a mountain and a throne and all this stuff. But they would know something was wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, and, and there's a lot more to it. I mean, it, it, there, there's a lot more about like the the new Jerusalem above, uh, the difference between the Jerusalem above and the, the Jerusalem below. Um, what it means when it says that the the new Jerusalem is the mother of us all. There, there's so much to this that uh, we just don't have time for. We do have to wrap it up. But yeah. <laughs> this this is really interesting, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> maybe it's just us. Maybe 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 people we're think we're crazy. Like or that. Maybe maybe the flat earthers don't like it. But uh, that's okay. They but don't that's have to. that's okay. But you know, to, to wrap it up, going back to gravity, this this might explain why there's extra gravity you know what 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 are scientists actually detecting mm -hmm. it might be some of this extra dimensional stuff at least some mm -hmm. of the parts that are connected with the earth and close enough to the earth to affect the the gravity of it mm -hmm. um and that to me is really interesting <laughs> so yeah i think i, I think we are uh, just about out of time but I think uh, so. <laughs> so we'll we'll wrap it's it up been a wonderful conversation though it has and i, I want to thank you all for joining us into the multiverse we've got some very exciting programs coming up on skywatch tv and here on into the multiverse so make sure you stay tuned for that we're going to be talking about me and derek's book uh the day the earth stands still lots of really interesting stuff for the end of 2017 so thank you for joining us uh Stay with us till next time. <laughs> uh, all that being said, take care and God bless. The Satanists wanted to install their own tribute, a pagan idol on the Capitol grounds right next to the Ten Commandments. Billions around the planet are witnessing a world in the grasp of sadistic spiritual darkness. This unholy alliance has infected our governments, our religious institutions, and our societies. The world appears to be unraveling. But can the evil behind these dark supernatural forces be defeated? Is everything playing out just as the Bible predicted it will in the final days? At last, you can know the answers to mankind's most urgent questions. 
and learn your destiny among today's events in the new unprecedented work taking the prophecy world by storm. Gods and Thrones, Nakash, Forgotten Prophecy and the Return of the Elohim by best-selling author, former decorated law enforcement officer and senior pastor Carl Gallops. This changes everything. Available now wherever fine books are sold. America is being manipulated by sinister occult forces and a Washington-based shadow government. But now, for the first time ever, expert on occultism and best-selling author Dr. Thomas Horn is joined by senior analyst from the Pentagon, Colonel Bob McGinnis, and retired police detective Carl Gallops to expose these nefarious forces. Skywatch TV is proud to announce the Saboteurs Collection. When you order the new books, Saboteurs, Gods and Thrones, and The Deeper State from Skywatch TV, you'll also receive free of charge for a limited time, the exclusive oversized hardback collector editions of the classic two-volume set, The Devils and Evil Spirits of Babylonia, and The Fallen Angels and the Heroes of Mythology. These two timeless masterpieces, finally in print again after 100 years, are the perfect gift for the scholar or Bible student in your life and hold a retail value of over $60 all by themselves, but are included absolutely free when you purchase the limited time Saboteurs collection. But that's not all. You'll also receive the never before aired DVD Off the Record, featuring exclusive interviews with Dr. Thomas Horn, Lieutenant Colonel Robert McGinnis, and Detective Carl Gallops, further exposing the dark secrets of globalist elites and how to stop them in their tracks. This content is only available in this exclusive offer and will not be aired anywhere else. Finally, you'll also receive The Shadow Hand, the over 24-hour Steve Quayle and Tom Horn definitive audio series on CD. This audio collection discloses the terrifying truth behind the infamous WikiLeaks dumps, the shadow government, and so much more. This unprecedented special offer sold separately holds a retail value of over $175. Yours now for only $29.99 plus shipping and handling. The holiday gift season is coming and you won't find this collection anywhere else. So don't delay. Order the Saboteurs Collection for somebody you love now at skywatchtvstore.com or call 1-844-750-4985.